Happy Sabbat everyone. It's good to be here again to study God's Word and I believe that um, we're, staying, we're taking safe and uh, keeping safe as well. I want to thank God for bringing us together to study His Word and uh, I can always tell people it's an amazing experience to be in God's presence to study His Word. And Amen. Yeah, it's, it's amazing you know, to actually be together to study God's Word. And uh, thank God today uh, we have two wonderful brothers who I can vouch for in terms of the Word with me today to, to study God's Word. Uh, by my left is uh, a brother and a friend, uh, Ozapo Anderson. Please, Anderson. Hello, everybody. And um, by my right is also an amazing brother, you know, I call him Elder, you know, <laughs> uh, Brother Chimela, please, please. Happy Sabbath, welcome to Sabbath School. Alright, so uh, today uh, we'll be looking at uh, the origin and nature of the Bible. Our study this morning is focused around the origin and nature of the Bible. Now, before we, we, we commence, I'll, I'll quickly just uh, ask us to bow our heads wherever we are at home as we say a word of prayer. So let's, let's pray. Let's read really Brother Chimela, please. Alright, we're praying. Eternal Father, we thank you for the awesome opportunity to be in your presence. Father, we ask and pray that as we feast on your word, that the lessons you have in store for us shall not delude us, O Lord. Speak through us and help Lord, that souls will be touched and edified today. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So, quickly, uh, a question popped last Sabbath, uh, which I think still revolves around our subject of today. And the question was, what happened to why are some of those other Bible uh, books like the book of um, Ezra, Second Ezra, First Ezra, uh, Tobit, and the rest? Why are they not part of the Bible? Okay, and uh, who decides or this, uh, who, who defines which should be in the Bible or which should not be in the Bible? So, in a very simple term, the other Bible, other, other biblical books, which are other books, sorry, which are not which are not in the Bible, are referred to as the apocrypha. Okay. Now, the apocrypha, what they mean actually is that they are hidden. Okay, the word apocrypha there means it is hidden. They are hidden books. And uh, as well, yeah, so there are two words. There is one called apocrypha, which is the capital letter A, which, which ends with an A. Then we have the apocrypha, capital letter, small, small letter A, and ends with an L. Okay, so the apocrypha are the ones they call the hidden books. Then the apocryphal are called small. So there might be like some small variation, but what we are focusing on here actually is the first one, the, the, the former apocrypha. Now they are also referred to as the non-canonical books in the sense that they are not they are not added to the scriptures because they did not follow suit with the structure of the way the Old Testament was actually arranged. All right. So we see in the Old Testament that most of the books actually were they were be, they they have this uh, this this flow. Okay, from look at looking at the books of, of Moses down to the prophets and then to the Psalms, or some other people will call them the letters. If you put all of them together, these three segments, the apocryphas they did not really, you know, link up with with, with, up with all of them. But I must say, not all the apocryphas, okay, I'm, I'm using the word not all, not all the apocryphas can be we can say we cannot learn from okay they are not in the bible because they did not link up with the canons but it doesn't mean that we cannot learn from them for example let me give a very quick example the book of second ezra for example is a very good historical background book okay it's, it's it basically put, it gives you a very clear history of of judah okay of the of the, of, of the jewish nation so yes you can learn from some of them now, the, the, the message a lot of people make is they try to bring all of them together, just like we have the 66 books of the canon. They try to bring the apocrypha themselves together and make them one. But no, they are not one. You don't bring them together like, like a box. The, 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 the point I want us to go with here, why they are not part of the Bible, is that they are not canonical. Okay? Uh, and uh, if you look at some Bibles, for example, the, 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 the Catholic Bible and some of the Orthodox Bibles, you, you find it actually there. Okay, they call them the Deutero Canonical, so meaning that it's second canons. So they are called Deutero Canonical books, meaning it forms the second canon. Okay, it didn't part, it wasn't part of the first canon, so they put that, they put them as the second canons. Okay, but we need to be very careful how we go by them. For example, uh, some of the portions of the scriptures they do not uh, they do not follow in line with what uh, 
the Bible actually says. For example, I'm trying to pick a, a portion here quickly. You would notice that uh, I'm trying to get it here. Like we, we actually had a bit of a story of it last 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 night. So, so you will notice that some of them they are against what the core Bible believes. For example, uh, some of the apocryphas actually believe that you can pray to the dead or you can pray for the dead, which we don't believe. The Bible, the other portions of the Bible, do not agree to that. Others believe that um, uh, dead saints can pray for us. Okay, that as well is not also uh, it's not also true according to what uh, the Bible teaches. Okay, I'm trying to just get them listed out here so that uh, a little bit all can be of the same uh, the same page on, on this. Okay. Okay, yeah, so so they, they are not they are not uh, they are not they, they actually go against some portions of the Bible not all of them like I said for example like the book of Maccabees they go against uh, some areas of the scriptures and uh, the books like the book of Baruch Baruch actually is one of the non -canon, non canonical books as well they also teach some things that are not part of the scripture so I, I don't want to spend too much time on it we can actually have a study on it some other time all right but the most important thing here is that they did not link up they did not they did not pass let me use the word they did not pass the test of the canons that were used in the scriptures so i just really want so, to so right. so if i get you correctly okay um these were books that were written almost the same period that other books of the bibles were written mm -hmm. and you would agree that in the time of the bible there were false prophets too right okay and a false prophet nobody will prevent him from writing true or false true. so so one of the ways that we can actually come to an agreement to say that these books should be and together with the scripture is if it speaks the same language mm -hmm. else we just speak every um, and I don't want to use the word Dick and Harry, right? Any kind of word that comes, anybody who says I wrote, yeah. just because it aligns in the same period of the Bible, then mm -hmm. it should be part of the scripture. Yeah. So, um, I just want to put this in simple terms, right? The Bible, like you've explained, yeah. there are basic litmus principles, principles that, that right. will make a book qualified to be referred, to be joined with the 66 books. Um, and the, the, you know, I think in, in the book of Isaiah it says to the law and to the testimony if they do not speak according to these things then the truth is not in them. Sure. So there are basic principles that we can use to test both true prophets today and false prophets today. I, and it's those same principles that were used to put this scripture together. Yeah. And the truth is there, there is hardly any area or facet of life that these 66 books no, don't talk about. Yeah. So, if I can find enough knowledge here, why should I go about looking for some sort of knowledge in something that does not confirm yeah. to the entirety of the Word of God? Alright, so very, very, very strong point there. Uh, and quickly, uh, I want, I want, to, I want to make uh, say this as well that uh, when you when you look at the apocryphal books, okay, now you would you would be shocked that actually there is a book called Daniel in the apocryphal books. Alright, so that one actually has thirteen chapters. So like, it's more like the 13th chapter of the book of Daniel, that's how they put it. It also has uh, some of the, so they have the wisdom of Solomon, okay, which was also added, like, okay, it's like an extension of what Solomon has written. Now, let me tell us another one that actually looks like it was actually almost an apocryphal book. It's actually the book of Esther. You would notice the book of Esther didn't mention the word God, right? Yeah. There's actually no mention of the word yeah, God that, that's of very Esther, true. right? Yeah. But if you look at the structure of the book of Esther, it syncs with every other canonical books right yeah, yeah. so so all of these are things you have to consider in fact like i said daniel esther ezra nehemiah all of these books some of the books that was initially almost being they were almost like the same line with when they were looking at them the canons right but they followed the mark they, they met the points they all spoke together they, they, there was that link and sync as they were being um, chosen so yeah so i think for that for the one who asked that question last sabbath i think that would be a uh, clear some grounds for you why they are not uh, part of the text but back to our, our text today uh, i start this morning we're looking at the origin and the nature of the bible our key text is from first thessalonians chapter 2 and we're reading verse 13 i'm going to be reading from the um, new king james version here it says for this reason we also thank god without season 
because when we when you receive the word of God which you heard from us you welcome it as not as the word of men but that it is in truth the word of God which also effectively works in you who believe and I want us to take the, the key text here uh, what's what's spoke to you when you when you, you look at this key text what's what's something that is standing out in this text Anderson let, let's, let's let me start with you what's that what's, what's stood out for you when okay. you look at the key text here yeah. well, what actually stands out for me is um I, I think the second to the last line that, that says you welcomed it not as the word of man mm -hmm. but as it is in truth the word of God. Amen. So how we perceive the scripture has significance to how we put what the scripture teaches in perspective. Sure. So if I see the, the, the scripture as like every other novel, right, I'm just going to read it and get excited. Sure. But if I have the belief that this is the word of God, I'm going to approach the scripture in a certain way. So um, Paul is saying here that the most astounding thing is how you perceive the words will speak to you because you do not see it as my words, but you see that what it is, which is the truth, the word of mm -hmm. God. Yeah. So how we believe our perception of the scripture, our perception, the, the mindset in which we, we carry, uh, before we open the Word of God, impacts directly impact our understanding of it, directly impact our practice and use of it. Amen. I think I also like to mention the fact right. that it says for it to be effective for you, mm -hmm. the power is you know, in your hand. You have to believe it. When you believe the Word, it becomes effective for you. So that was what stood out for me. Amen. Effective. Amen. I, 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 exactly. I like that part. It stands within your control. Really? Because it says, which also effectively works in you. Who believe so yeah. I, I cannot feel the impact of the word of God right if I don't believe I don't it mean. in the first place so mm -hmm. there is a sense of like Anderson said it it helps us it helps, it helps us put the it put, it puts the entirety of the scriptures of God's word into perspective yeah. mm -hmm. okay so I, I think that's a very strong but but looking at the fact that so the key the, the key point for us here is the fact that these people did not see the scriptures as the words of men but they saw it as the word of God so that's key that's key but how can I how can I see the scriptures as the Word of God if somehow I don't believe in God if there is a doubt in the existence of God hmm. how do I believe in the Word of uh, God uh, uh, you know my, my answer right now looks like I'm already jumping the lesson to the end right okay. because the Bible says without faith it mm -hmm. is impossible in the very first place to exactly. please God okay. right so faith is critical to our understanding of the Word of God um, um, I, I, I don't know at some point we were all children right sure and um, we yes as babies we saw our parents moving we saw them walking about yeah but nobody told us they weren't born that way right but each time they made us want to walk they would stretch i remember for my nephew i had to stretch my hands and then he would attempt walking towards me right uh, and that was how he learned how to walk and all of us we do that right but the child did have no form knowledge that is able to walk before he made the first step sure. to walk mm -hmm. so it took faith for that child to lean towards me or try to move towards me in fact we rarely do anything in life without first believing in it right if you don't believe in the job you do you are not going to do it well yeah. if, if you don't believe in fact I, I think in medicine there is what is called faith factor if you don't believe that the medication you are taking will make you well you don't respond to it so faith is very very fundamental believing in god believing in the word of god is very fundamental to 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 understanding the scriptures amen okay so, yeah, so just to add to that i would say two things that are also very key inspiration and revelation mm. so as much as you are not a believer it's important that whoever is working with that person to further understand the word goes through inspiration let him see the lessons you have learned as a believer bring them closer and that way the holy spirit handles the revelation and you know the lesson is clearer very that becomes clever amen amen, amen. now 
three three uh words of the, one of the one of the things I want us to understand here, which are like three words about the scriptures, is about that Bible is inspired, it's inerrant, and it is infallible. I would call them the great three eyes. All right, it is inspired in the sense that. It was not men men that just decided to, okay, mm -hmm. I, okay, I feel like, oh, let me just, it's not a feeling. Secondly, it is inerrant, meaning there are no errors, it's free of errors, right? And it is infallible because it is true all the way, okay? It is true all the way. We don't take some portions of the Bible to say, okay, this Bible speaks to me for that reason, I think this one I believe, okay? And this one is God, right? Just, exactly. <laughs> so it is infallible. The Word of God is true in all of its ramification. Now, let's turn to the book of Second Peter quickly. Second Peter chapter one, verse nineteen. Second Peter chapter one. Uh, but if you have it there, you can read okay. for us. Yeah, Second Peter chapter and one. And so we have the prophetic 19. word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Amen. 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 Now go go further to verse twenty one, please. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke. And they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, no, no I, I think we okay. skipped 20. Okay, skip 20. Very yeah, significant. So it's actually it 19 to 21. Knowing okay. this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Exactly. And that this, this is one of the areas where people begin to say, I think this is what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. I, I believe this is what the scripture is saying. Um, the scripture itself gives a way to understand the scripture. It says, you have, I think that is in the book of Isaiah again, mm -hmm. and verse 20, chapter 20, I think. And it says that when you want to study the scripture, you must study verse upon verse, Precept. precept upon precept, a line here and a line there, right? A little here, a little there. Let me, let me just read it. It's in oh, Isaiah okay. 28, okay. and we have it in verse 10. And, and uh, verse 10 it says, For precept must be upon precept, mm -hmm. precept upon precept, line upon line, yet line upon line, mm -hmm. yet a little and there a little. So, so what this means is, I cannot just pick a verse. Um, maybe I pick a verse in, in Genesis, Cain killed Abel, and mm -hmm. I come to Matthew and I see Jesus say, and so do that yeah, wise, and then I, I have to go and kill people. So I have to compare scripture with scripture. Mm -hmm. um, if, if Peter said this, what does Paul have to say about it? Mm -hmm. If Matthew said this, what, what does Luke have to say about it? That is what basically Isaiah is saying. Yeah. Precept upon precept, yeah. line upon line. And it ties down to what verse 20 is saying that knowing this first, before you even start grasping the fact that this was given by the inspiration of God, you've got to know this first, that no part of this word has private interpretation. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with how you think, mm -hmm. but it has everything to do with what the scripture says. Exactly. So yeah. I think that, that brings me uh, to what they call systematic theology, okay? So what systematic theology means is that these, these scriptures, you know, it is all the, the ideas are all scattered around the, 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 the books, right? So, okay. systematic theology brings the idea that, okay, we can actually break the scriptures into systems, okay? For example, uh, the concept of angels, right? In, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sphere of study, they call it angelology, meaning the, 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 the issues of, of angel. If you don't want to talk about demons, I was shocked like, I when I hear that there's something called demonology. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So it's actually all broken down into systems so we can actually understand it in their, in their area, in their, in their spheres. For example, eschatology. Okay, uh, uh, hermeneutics, and all of these breakdowns. Okay? So they have to break them down into systems. That's why they call them systematic theology. So the most important thing for us here right now is to understand that the Bible is not of man's own wisdom, right? But actually, it was inspired and it was given from, since it was given to us from God, it means that that's the only one that can, that can, that can, can actually give us the interpretation of it. I think, I, let's let's look at First Corinthians. I think First Corinthians gives us a very um, strong light on that. First Corinthians 2, First Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 14, Verse 14. Okay. Yeah, we can refer. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. for they are foolishness unto him. Mm -hmm. Neither can he make them make 
neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Amen. And so you just hold that text there. But Chimela, you're going to open to the book of um, Second Peter. Second Timothy, sorry. Second Timothy. And we'll read um, chapter 3, verse 16. 7 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. Right, so we, we so what, 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 what do you find there about the, the, the nature of the scriptures? The origin, how, how did it come? How did the Bible come in its first place? I think what stands out is the fact that mm -hmm. all it didn't say some, it didn't yeah. say the ones, I, the ones I like. It didn't say the all new scripture, testament. <laughs> all scripture is given by inspiration from God. Mm -hmm. I think that for me defines how I should approach the Bible. Okay. It is not, it wasn't, it, it wasn't feelings of the writers. Exactly. It, wasn't, it wasn't their own thoughts, mm -hmm. okay? but it was inspired by God. So that means I should approach the Bible with that level of authority, knowing that this is God's own instruction exactly and so as first peter tells us first peter says that holy men of god speak as so they were moved, moved by, by the holy Ghost. okay so so that that, that now brings me now Anderson, that brings me now to the point of understanding the bible now so what's what approach should i should i give when i when it comes to studying the scriptures um, then let me read that text again Great. first right. corinthians chapter 2 verse mm -hmm. 14 says but the natural man receiveth nothing receiveth not the things of the spirit of god because naturally the things of god are foolishness unto him right mm -hmm. is there neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned yeah. so if we understand that yes we all sing music right we sing people's songs right um most of the songs we sing we didn't compose them yeah, sure. so but then we sing it right mm -hmm. for you to really understand that song you need to know um for you to understand the meaning of all the way my savior leads me you need to understand that fanny j cross by almost got hit by a car before she sang that song mm -hmm. then you will understand the message and then you can internalize the message mm -hmm. so now the, the thing is yes we sing other people's song just as paul said what god told him so the real author of the message of paul is who is god right and the bible says that all scripture is inspired by the spirit of god yeah. and and here we are reading that on our own natural self with our own natural capacity yeah. we cannot understand the things of god because they are spiritually discerned it means the first step to understand the scripture is to study the Bible and inviting the author of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It means that for, before I open this book, I need to be in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the only ways I can be in the Spirit is by inviting the Holy, the, the, the Holy Spirit. And the only way to invite the Holy Spirit is through prayer. Amen. Right? Amen. I think, I think that's, that, that all connects that. Hey, yo. There's, there's this line that says on the, in, the, in, the, in our study, which I want us to really look at, it's in, I tell you on Monday, I, I, I have to bring out that line, okay? It says, all of scripture is divinely inspired. That's true. Yeah. Right? Even, now that's the line I want us to really look at closely. Even if not all parts are equally inspiring to read or even necessarily applicable to us today. Hmm. What, what do we have to say about the fact that okay, all of scripture was inspired but not equally inspiring to read? What does that mean when it says not equally inspiring to read the reader? Like, yeah, anyone? I think for me, I was going to say, how do we discern which is inspiring and which will not be inspiring? Okay. How do I know? No, no, no. I, I, I think what it happens to us to sometimes, right? right. Um, you know, there are times where a scripture you know already mm. right it's not like it's the first time but you've been in a certain situation and you read that same scripture again and it makes more sense mm. i did that come to you before or maybe you've listened to a sermon before but because of your current state and situation and you are listening to that sermon again and it looks like okay wow i didn't learn this thing before i didn't even know this was in the scripture before it is because at that point you are currently inspired by that scripture right so i may be reading some scripture and it applies to me 
But this lesson is saying even the ones that you are reading that do not currently at this moment, at this point in time, it, it, they, they, you read a lot of stuff and it's only maybe a verse that speaks to you at that point because of your current state of mind. Because maybe you need to get some spiritual connection. But this text is saying even the other ones that do not connect are inspired by God. Alright, so I think, yeah, so the, 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 the point here actually is the fact that, yes, all of scriptures were inspired, mm -hmm. right? But there are some of them actually really, which is true, which really don't apply to us anymore, right? Like yeah, the feasts, sure. feasts, right? Yeah. Most of the feasts and all of those, they, they really don't apply to us right now. But they were inspired. Yeah. At the time they were written down for Israel, they actually were inspired. They were written down for their time to foreshadow Christ's coming. So right now we focus on Christ's coming, right, in the, in the scheme of things. But as, a, as, a, as it is right now in the scripture, so we want to talk about the sac 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 sacrificial lamb, all of those stuff, sacrificial system, it don't apply to us anymore, right? So at, at this point in time, it's not inspiring to read. If I start, like, like the writer says, it is actually not necessarily applicable to us. But you know, I can still read that same text and say, oh wow, if I just imagine myself being in that time, it means I would have killed about 66 goats this year. And I fall down on my knees and I say, thank you God, because I wouldn't have even have Oh yes, it. exactly. So yeah. even at that point, yeah, so, it's still inspired. So, yeah, so, so the point actually the writer is making here, which I actually truly understand, is the fact that the literal interpretation, application of it, exactly, yeah. it really doesn't apply to us right now. But like, yeah, like you said, when you now look at it in the sense of, okay, how does it link me with Christ, okay? And I've had to bring me to appreciate Christ the more. Yeah. But when I look at, okay, I should actually have been bringing goods every day. Promise. Every day, every day, every day, you know? I think just, just to lay on that, it's important mm -hmm. to remember that um, 2 Timothy 3.16 actually says yeah. that there are several things that the scripture does. Yeah. Correction, reproof, instruction in righteousness. Exactly. So different aspects of this picture, of, of the scripture, Border on different things. Mm. Okay, so just as Anderson rightly said, when you see what would have been the cost of being saved, of you know confessing your sin, of you know getting a priest to intercede on your behalf, and you see how expensive this time of lockdown, how we appreciate we that. <laughs> we appreciate the gift you know that came through Jesus Christ. So I also think uh, that that is why we have this part of the scripture that you know don't directly relate you know as it were. In our present day. All right, so quickly let, let's go to Facebook. On um, Facebook, um, bro, um, so the name I'm seeing is White Hope, okay? But it's saying, it's actually giving a contribution and it says, Deuteronomy, to, uh, Deuteronomy 32 4, he is the rock. Mm. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. We don't trust because the Bible is a good book or because it is written by a holy and good author. I think that's a very strong point. Wow. It's wow. not because the Bible is a good book. You know, as a matter of fact, the Bible happens sometimes seem like very boring to read. Mm. Uh, that's the truth. Like, so you'd rather Netflix than <laughs> yeah. but, but the truth is, if which we have established from the beginning, when we act, that's why it's very important that before you even study the Bible, pray. So you need to invite the Holy Spirit because it just looks so boring. I, you know, I remember when I used to when I used to study the Bible. I tried to I tried to read you know read the Bible from Genesis. Genesis the and when Bible. you get when you get when you start Genesis, it looks very interesting because you're reading the history and all of, all of the stuff, how creation start happened and all of that. You get to Leviticus, and when you not know you get you get to Exodus, beautiful experience, children of Israel. Now when you not get to Leviticus and numbers and you start counting and telling the son of the son of and you are doing like this. But the truth is. When the Holy Spirit inspires you, each of even the book of Numbers, and sometimes you will find, find the you lesson find lesson there. there. You find it interesting. <laughs> you know, even you know, some someone asked recently, like, I won't ask who this book of Solomon, Songs of Solomon, why they put up a Bible. <laughs> but the reality is, if we look at it with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, right, you will find a lot of lessons, which which a lot of marriage people actually realize that if some book Songs of Solomon is a very good book. Which, which speaks to them as couples, you know. So, yes. So it's not a book for single people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but, but again, the question I want to really ask here is because as we're looking at the lessons, we realize that, okay, like Paul rightly stated, the scriptures were, it was, it was they were men, men like us. I mean, I use the word men, men because they were, there was nothing so special 
Like there was nothing so unique about them that they had to be the ones choose. They were men, men. So the question why did God have to use men mortals? The Bible is more like a person that reading the life of someone, the biography of someone. So yeah, the, the word is uh, the, the Christ is spoken and uh, the word the word here talks about Christ and it's putting them together, they are connected together. Uh, where I hope is saying angels can't do the work of evangelism. Christ was the only one that was promised to pay the ultimate price that he has done. Read the story of Lazarus and the rich man in Luke 16, okay? And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Okay, that's uh, verse 29 of that uh, Luke chapter 16. Thank you, Brahope, hope for that comment. And uh, this is from Barinana Bema. She says, Jesus would have been using cloud computing in our time. He's not on our wife. Yeah, that's much in the cloud. <laughs> oh, that's true. Like we said, yeah. which we established here already. Yeah, if Christ was in our time, they'd have using. He talk, talking about things like cloud computing, talking about the fact that they uh, using analogies that that relate to us right now. Okay, things like yeah, which I've we've talked about them before. Uh, there is a drive. Okay, your name is that that said you you preach the gospel. Both on your WhatsApp status, your Insta stories, and to roll the world. No, no, I was actually having, I was actually having a study. I was having a study with, uh, with, with, with the family, and um, and the, the 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 father asked if Christ was in our time, would Christ be on WhatsApp? I said, obviously yes. He would be on WhatsApp. He would actually be sharing the gospel on WhatsApp, right? So Christ had to meet people at their point of where, 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 where he could actually reach, reach them so that he could actually minister to them more in the so, no, what are we even talking about mm -hmm. at some point jesus had five thousand followers so what are we talking about <laughs> people following him so definitely all right. right because that was their social media yeah. right their social media was to sit on a hilltop and talk to people uh, exactly. it does, yeah. the point is this is a platform it doesn't right. matter whether it's electronic or, or, or physical <laughs> now, 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 bringing, bringing, bringing Christ together, bringing Christ and the Word. How do we now connect all of it? Because, like, from, like we established from the beginning, the only connection to all of this is faith. Mm -hmm. yeah, because the Bible says in the Book of Hebrews, chapter six, eleven, verse six, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah, yeah. So, in, in all of what we've been discussing and studying about the Bible, taking faith out of it. We we'll just see the scriptures as a male literature. Okay, we we'll just read it just to gain some form of uh, either grammar or whatever we want to do. And again, I I, I, need, I must establish this that when we talk about the scriptures and the nature of, 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 of the scriptures, we are not looking at the letters. I must say we are not looking. At, sorry, we are not looking at the book, the hard copy like this. Okay, that is not what we are looking at here. We are looking at the word, the written word, and the, exactly the content of the scriptures. There are a lot of people actually when they go to bed, which I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to dispute anyone. Yes, but it's not a talisman. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just put your Bible under your pillow. pillow. Uh, yeah. Okay, the, it's it's the, the word, word that we internalize. Exactly, yeah, it is the word, the content of the scriptures. You know, somebody will say, ah, this is the Bible, law. Uh, if the Bible is, ah, don't, don't touch it like that, don't touch it like that. I'm not saying we should go find these scriptures in, in its hard form, but we should understand that it is the letter, it is the word itself that makes the impact, okay? So, bringing all of that together, we realize that taking faith out of the picture, we have lost the entirety of what the scripture is really about to us. Now, quick, so let's, let's look at why do you think faith, or why, what, why do you believe that faith should actually be the fundamental when it comes to understanding the scriptures or, or looking at the scriptures in its entirety. Well, why do you feel, or not feeling right now, why do you believe, let me use this word, that faith is the foundation of it? Okay, so we understand faith to be the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, very good. Okay, and many of the things we discover in the Bible are not things that we were there when they were living there. They were things that were passed down generation to generation. So for us to even relate to it, there has to be a, there, there, there has to be a basis. Mm -hmm. And that basis is okay, I believe. Mm. I have the faith that what I'm studying in this world are true. Mm -hmm. That what I discover in this Bible will actually documented, inspired for my own edification. Exactly. So I think there is no way around it that you know that we can approach the Bible without faith. Yeah, for, for, for me, I, I see the scripture as a love letter from God because all of this is um, trying to create and build a relationship with yeah. God. 
And for those of us who are married or for those of us who have tested relationship, if you don't believe in a relationship, it will work. It's basic. If you don't see future with a young man or a young woman, you are not going to put in your best to the relationship in the first place. So, fundamental to having a relationship with someone is trusting that person, is relying on that person that this thing that we do together jointly is going to work. So, if you do not have such faith and confidence in God, then you will not make sense of the letters from God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, faith is important for us to actually uh, build a better understanding and relationship with God, better understanding the Word and better relationship with God. Now, but I want to say that faith is not mine. <coughs> and what Ellen White says is that we would settle in the truth both intellectually and spiritually. Mm. So it's not just it's not just saying oh faith when it brings some up some issues up that you you can actually understand. Okay, it's, it's logical. In fact, the scripture is logical. The scripture has told us to prove all things. Exactly. Yeah. So even in the believing of it, yeah. you still got to be inquisitive. Oh, definitely. It, like you said, it's not blind faith. Mm -hmm. But it takes faith to first open it and even yeah. want to study. But yeah. when you're studying, the Bible says don't take everything hook, line, and sing. I said prove all things. And do what? Hold fast to that which is true. And I in most cases, everything in this book is true. Yeah. I think From something that also you know, stuck out for me in the lesson is where it says, the knowledge and understanding of the word comes from, lo from a loving and trusting relationship. Amen. So there's Amen. A, there are requirements, loving and trusting, before knowledge and understanding <laughs> are come. And you know, why it struck me was because it applies today. You have a child at home who doesn't listen to you, you tell him you know, to get stuff done and they disobey. I think what is missing is the love and the trust. Exactly. And that is why the knowledge and understanding does not come. So I was able to extrapolate this lesson to even apply to this life to say, okay, in relationships, in interactions with people, at work, where we try to, you know, work with colleagues, is there love and is there trust in that relationship? Then knowledge and understanding will not come if that is missing. So I think that's an important, you know, point that we can even take to see that when we relate with people, as long as it is relationship-based, Love and trust will be the basis of that relationship. Amen. Amen. I, I really, I really appreciate that 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 last comment. Love and trust, trust. very important in every relationship. As and as, again, as it applies to us and and the Lord. Uh, the last comment I want to take on WhatsApp is uh, is from Doctor Mrs. Azubike. She says it really takes faith to accept the word of God. Amen. 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 And that's really true. So we we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up here at this point in time on our study, but I, I want us to take home this lesson, the fact that the Word of God is of divine origin. Amen. You can always trust the Bible. You can always believe the Bible. The most important thing there is apply faith. Okay, when you come into the study, the Bible says when we come into the room of Bible study with a heart of faith and trust, we will definitely actually understand, okay, keeping all our preconceived notions and all of our ideas uh, behind and say, okay, Lord, teach me your word. Amen. We will find answers to all of our hearing questions and the Lord will bless us as we keep studying. Remember I said, this spot is going to be an amazing one for us as we look deeply into the scriptures. May the Lord help us as we keep studying in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We close with a word of prayer right now. Uh, we pray Anderson, you pray for us as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we glorify you. There's been an amazing lesson we've learned today. Even some things that we thought we knew, we, we have unlearned and learned. To you be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Help that these words will transform us. Because your word not only informs us, but it has the power to change our lives. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray for those who are watching. May your transforming power reach out to them. Amen. Your word says it even had the power to break through bones and even get to marrows. Father, please help that your words will pierce through our hearts. Amen. Help that these words will change our lives. Help that as we continue to study our field, we continue to grow. Amen. And at the end our lives, your church will be edified and our lives will be transformed. And this world will be blessed. We ask and pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.